right, so we have a um, small construction update today with um, some facts that I wanted to present on the differences between Val Raven and our current construction project. Now remember, anything that I am presenting to you is pure speculation, and I have no idea what this actual coaster is yet, just like you. This is just um, a forum for us to discuss um, current findings and uh, speculate what's coming in 2019. So let's get off to a quick start. So Val Raven has 51 support columns, um, 103 pieces of track, and 69 concrete footers. Now we all know if you've been following along on my recent updates, we are starting to find out how many support columns this coaster potentially has along with how many footers. We already know that there are approximately 60 something footers poured on this construction site already if you're including the station and they still have many more to pour um, along with the lift hill that's going in right now. So we're gonna get right into it. So with some of the um, columns that we're finding, um, you have them marked on the property or the construction site with uh, these pylons. So here is column seven, and we know this is how they mark the footers and where the columns are going. On some of them, you'll even see left and right for, you know, some support beams and columns have left and right support beams slash columns. So um, I do know um, on the station side of it, we have column seven through 54 visible on these sections. So column seven is off to the right of the station and column 54 is off in the back. Um, so th th that's the interesting part of this is th we now know in the station area that there are some columns that are high up on. Now this is where it gets really interesting and this is why I originally brought up the fact sheet for Val Raven. So here we have column 91 left. Column 91 left is in the back area near Timboa Falls, and this is what makes it extremely interesting. So Valraven has 51 support columns. Our coaster, if it's a dive coaster, has what looks like, appears to be, um, 91 support columns so far. That's really interesting. This says a couple of things. This can either suggest that our dive coaster is either going to be just longer in length, maybe it won't have an MCBR and it'll do a lot of inversions and all that and be the same height as Valraven, or maybe it is larger than Valraven and it has more track, um, more track to make through, more of a course to get through. Um, that to me is very um, possible, or plausible, sorry, possible, plausible, and I'm really starting to think, I was, as you all know, I'm not a firm believer in my theory of this being a giga yet either. I'm just presenting the facts as I see them and discussing them with you, and there seems to be a lot of theories and facts being presented by the construction site that would suggest this coaster could be larger. We know the track in the tunnel is one bolt wider than that to Val Raven. It is slightly larger than Val Raven's track, which is an interesting um, theory to look at. Why would they need a larger piece of track if the tunnel itself can only fit eight, um, six or eight across seating, 10 at max, which I don't think is the case. Um, we measured about 12 to 13 people length wide. You got to take in arm reach space. So we're assuming eight people across as the um, seating. So if that's not the case, if it's not larger train size, train size than Val Raven, then something else has to be at play here. Now, um, we know they're not done footers. So again, the um, Val Raven, I said the Val Raven, Val Raven has 69 um, footers, and we are probably going to see more than that based off of how much rebar cage is on property and how many um, footers are already on site. So again, this brings us back to um, the 91 support columns and Val Raven only has 51. So what do you guys think? Why are we seeing more possible support columns on this coaster than that to Val Raven? Comment down below why you think that's the case. Do you think it's just gonna be a longer but similar size um, dive coaster than that to Val Raven? Or do you think we are looking at a much larger project than that to Val Raven? So I wanna talk about this. So what they're currently digging by Mindbuster is definitely this part of the coaster. This is the pre-lift slash the start to the lift, and this is definitely what they're digging. Now, someone reached out to me with a lot of great information on construction projects. So once we see concrete start to be poured for this part of the coaster, 
Um, expect it to cure for about 28 days, and then you'll start to see some vertical construction starting. I'm expecting cement to be poured for this very shortly. It looks like they just need to prep their rebar cages, get them into place, and then they'll start pouring the foundation. So this is the location of that picture that I just saw you, um, that showed you. So you're gonna see the pre-lift in that section and it's gonna head on over in that direction. Um, the end of the lift is very visible. So this is me trying to see any signs of like support column markings in this area. It is only further back there they're not marking the column sections right here so this is that turn out of the station and then it's going to go into that pre-lift and there's the rebar cages that are square that i was just talking about that'll fit in that section right there so again we measured um a length of the lift hill anywhere between 95 meters and 105 meters long we're putting in some room for air there and all those measurements bring us to a really tall dive coaster so we're expecting this dive coaster to be between 250 feet and 277 feet um, tall. And um, that's not including about a 30 foot deep um, tunnel. We don't know the exact depth of the tunnel. We do know it's pretty deep. So it could be anywhere between um, 20 to 40 feet deep. So we're accounting that in our measurements on how tall this dive coaster is. And that alone brings us to the possibility of a giga dive coaster. Um, now, there are some more objects that appeared under the orange tarp again. So we have more very large, this time extremely large, round um, footer encasings, I guess those easy pour foundations in there. So here's the columns. They removed them from the construction site because it looks like they're going to get ready to lay down sod um, for the remainder of the season. And then once Splashworks closes, they'll start up again. But all those um, pylons are marked with the column numbers. So they range from 51 to 91. I know in there there's 57, there's 68, um, 91 still on the construction site, and they got the Canadiana fencing up. So we know that construction isn't going to continue on that plot of land anymore, unfortunately. And from today, there was hardly any construction going on, so construction may be coming to a standstill until Splashworks closes. They'll probably finish and pour that foundation to the lift hill, and then they'll count to 28 days, and then they'll start vertical construction in this area and this area only. We know they're already getting really far ahead if theming isn't involved. They have the tunneled in and done. They have the track in the tunnel and they have the station area foundation poured. Valraven started construction six months before opening and was completed very quickly. So they are very ahead of schedule if theming isn't involved in this ride, which is extremely interesting. Um, so there are rumors of a second tunnel there's rumors of, you know, a splashdown. I don't have any confirmation of any of those rumors, nor do I see any signs of that yet. Now, in this section, we notice that there's a lot of construction markers over here. We have um, rumors um, circulating that um, the Mountainside Cafe is going to be removed to make room for some support beams. And that does seem very plausible. So I think a great relocation of that Mountainside Cafe, obviously with a rename, would fit directly across from this new Canyon Trader, and it would fit really well in this area. And I think that's why there might be construction markers this far north. Um, now I wanted to talk about this a little bit. So originally we thought this might be a teaser to the coaster, and I still think it has something to do with the coaster, but I definitely do want to reiterate that um, this could just be a teaser for the overhaul of the area itself. So we know it's going to be Canadian themed, um, it's obvious, and we think that um, the pathway might be themed to this trail that they're hinting at in that, um, that teaser image, and it might not be for the coaster yet. We're being told teasers are going to be withheld for the coaster until July 1st, Canada Day. What better way to start teasing this new coaster than to start teasing it on Canada Day if it's going to be Canadian themed? Um, so it does add up that the teasers might start then and not necessarily yet. And that teaser might not be for the coaster itself, but for the new area um, as a whole. So um, again, um, we're thinking and speculating that this area might be that big overhaul for the Canadian theming. That Timberwolf pathway to Splashworks might be getting a grand overhaul to include some... Um, and maybe a new restaurant and some great Canadian theming on your way to this new coaster. It just makes sense. So um, we all know, so as you can see here, maintenance um, is cleaning up this area and also it looked like they were turning off something. So we know that Skyriders Pond of Land had a big electrical um, outlet underneath it. Um, so we have a feeling that 
before construction continues, that this is the area that they were, um, you know, turning off electricity to so they can continue to dig or do whatever they need to do. They, they had the giant Allen key type thing that turns things on and off, and that's what it looked like they were doing during our entire visit there. There were no construction workers, just maintenance. Um, and that's exactly what it looked like they were doing. They're going to a couple of locations and turning it whatever off or whatever on. We have no confirmation on that of what they were doing. We just noticed that it potentially had something to do with Splashworks because there was a lot of activity in Splashworks. Um, but yeah, it, it, very interesting overall. This entire project is very interesting um, from its potential height with the evidence that we're seeing to its type of coaster um, in correlation to that of Cedar Point. Like, why are you build a dive coaster if Cedar Point just built a record-breaking dive coaster? So will Canada's Wonderland break its records? It's all so hard to digest and analyze. Um, so as you can see, just Canada's Wonderland maintenance workers over the construction site today. No actual construction, which is weird for a Thursday. It was very nice weather, so it had nothing to do with weather. Um, so we're thinking that they're really far ahead uh, on schedule and they're taking some extra days off here and there. Because we noticed last week too that they took a lot of days off, um, two extra days off. So we're noticing that maybe construction is just down to a two or three day period in the week. Um, and it looks like these people know what's maybe coming and they're discussing um, what it is. They um, definitely did some weird hand gestures as they walked towards us. They did this weird like kind of like um, corkscrew type thing with their hand as they walked by. But here's some interesting things. So I measured the construction site, and as you see, um, the difference between them is very minimal, but Canada's Wonderland's construction site is larger. So that's very interesting. Now here's a poll that Cedar Point did um, for their general public. Which ride is your favorite? And it was between Raptor and Val Raven. A lot of enthusiasts underestimate the power of a dive coaster in the community. And I mean the community as general public and the community as a whole that the, the theme park does business in. Dive coasters may be one or two gimmick coasters, but to the public, the general public, these things are monsters and they're extremely popular as shown in this poll. People love dive coasters. They love it. Commercials are super easy to make around a dive coaster and the media eats these things up. So I think this coaster, if it is a dive coaster, is gonna do extremely well at Canada's Wonderland and I'm excited for it regardless if it's a dive, wing, invert, um, sit down, or um, I don't even know, flying, whatever, whatever it ends up being, I'm super excited for it and I could not be more thrilled that we are getting another BNM for our top three coasters at the park. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, hit that like button, comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't. Share this video to your friends, family, um, and your social media to help get the message out. Have a good one, bye.